Welcome to the 21st century, where we have more of everything we need to make our lives longer, brighter and bolder than ever before. And this will only get better, but not without the most vital and civilizing commodity on Earth, energy. Some people say our insatiable appetite for energy will destroy the world. Rubbish. We're never going to give it up, and we can't get enough of this stuff. In fact, we need more. Much more. So, here's the big idea. I want enough energy to satisfy the world's appetite, not just for the next 50, 100, or even 200 years. I want it never to run out. Not easy. But fortunately, there are people all over the planet with ideas that might just make it happen. One or two are quite brilliant. So let me just put this very simply. You're making petrol out of exhaust by right. adding sunlight. Right. While others are rather maverick. There we go! Whoa! God speed, space elevator. I love that. Or possibly just a little fanciful. We need 100,000 of those kites. That's all of Europe powered with kites. Yeah. Not sure I quite believe it. <laughs> Some of the stuff that's going on out there defies belief, imagination, possibly even common sense, but it is all part of a deadly serious attempt to change the way the world works. So, bring it on. Let's start by looking directly into the sun. After all, what's it ever done for us, apart from dividing the night from the day and being a bit fundamental to life on Earth? Is that it? Or could it do something really useful? That is a solar-powered car. A racing car, in fact, that will do 125 kilometres an hour, or 80 miles an hour, in the proper money. Now, you're not going to win a Grand Prix with that, obviously, but it's not bad for something that runs entirely on the power of sunlight. And these students who built it, they're from the University College of London, have just driven it almost 2,000 miles from Darwin to Adelaide across the baking desert of Australia. This will be good, then. We're preparing for a high-stakes experiment. The voice goes all funny inside here, can you tell? That will push the car to its very limits. Why is it going backwards? But before that, I have to master the controls. Oh, the turning circle is absolutely hopeless. I intend to drive this solar-powered vehicle not in the sun-drenched Australian outback, forwards, but here on a ropey old airfield in Guildford. Now, as you've probably worked out, we're actually driving at the moment just on the battery power because the bodywork isn't on, so the solar cells aren't connected. Now, I realise that there is something slightly preposterous about doing this in England on a very grey overcast day and when the whole concept of solar power is completely academic. But there is a point to it, because what we're going to do is demonstrate just how much power the sun can give us using this solar-powered car. And to do that, and this is going to sound ridiculous, I know, we're going to wait until it's dark. Correct. We'll drive in the dead of night. If you've ever doubted how much power comes from the sun, watch what happens when we take it away. Is it dark yet? Now, this has never been tried before, driving a solar-powered car in the dark using artificial light in place of the sun. If we could just have the lights on, please. Now, I'll be driving the car, and on my cue, we will gradually increase the amount of light, like this, and the car will get more light into its solar cells, more electricity will be generated, and the car will go faster. It's really very simple, in theory. Thank you. Hold 
it. Okay. James is ready. Okay, and action. Right, I have a reading, 0.2 amps. It is, it's going. That's amazing. I'm assured there are 402 solar cells on the car and they convert around 20% of that light into electricity. That's about twice as good as your desktop calculator, should you ever want to drive one. I have reached a speed of about 1.2 miles an hour, but I'm still accelerating. Right, I'm ready for more light, more light, cue. Oh, yes. Four, four and a bit, 2.6 miles per hour. Accelerating very slightly, I might get five kilometers an hour. There it is, five and a half kilometers an hour. This is like driving a missile. I said that just to flatter the students. It's actually more like a flat milk float. So, time for a bit more light. Ready for more light? Cue light! Wow, that is blinding. And I can't see out of the windscreen. And my face is now melting. That's 18 kilowatts of light focused through this curved windscreen onto my eyeball. The interior is not well ventilated. And yes, I'll probably never see again. But so what? Here at last is that white heat of technology. I'm going for 10 miles an hour. It's, it's very close. The wheels of the trucks carrying the lights are a blur. There it is, 10 miles an hour from light bulbs. That is absolutely remarkable. It proves that in future, if local councils make the street lighting stupidly and dangerously bright, we can all drive around for free. So, what can we deduce from this highly sophisticated and groundbreaking experiment? Well, I saw 10 miles per hour on the speedo of the car, and to achieve that, we had to use all those lamps, which amount to about 18 kilowatts worth. That's enough to light the streets of a small village. And yet, that car will do 80 miles per hour using just the light from the sun, even though the sun is 92 million miles away. So that would suggest that there really is a great deal of power to be harnessed from up there. Well, not now, because it's night time, but tomorrow, maybe. Thank <laughs> you.